Now, <clears throat> sine theta of root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 2 is found on the unit circle, right? Root 3 over 2, root 2 over 2. 1 over root 2 is just root 2 over 2. So if you see it, you spot it. Um, a half, 0, 1, all those undefined all fall in there. So sine of root 3 over 2 is when y equals root 3 over 2. When does y equal root 3 over 2? At 60 degrees and then at 120 which is pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3, I think. So I didn't show this before because I want you guys to actually be able to do this algebraically because you can't do it by graphically all the time. Um, but you can use your calculator. So let's show you how. And whenever you're given equations with only one missing variable, so in this case you're missing the theta, which you could just make it an x, right? Whenever you have equations, equations means an equal sign, and you only have one variable, you can always find that actual variable by plugging into your calculator. How do you do that? Well, you were, should have been taught last year. Some people are, some people aren't. So I'm going to show it to you as if you've never learned it before or if it fell out of your head in summer or whatever. So sine theta is y1, and then this would be y2 in your calculator. Okay? So go into Y1, go into Y2, plug those in. Oh wait, so in your Y equals, you're going to have sine X into Y1. Now I press the button sine, what do I have to think? Am I in degree or radian? Which one do I need to be in? Radian, sure, because the answer has to be radian. However, what if it asks me for exact values? You need to have it in degrees and then convert it to radians because your answers in your calculator will always be decimals. Okay? So if you're someone who wants to stick it into degrees and just have it in degrees the whole time and just convert it at the end, that's fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. Most people choose that. So, and then in root 3 over 2. Make sure you close that bracket or it's going to root the whole thing and it's not supposed to. So I'm going to go to window. Oh my gosh. And I'm going to go from 0 to 360, personally myself. Make it go up by 45. It doesn't matter. You can make it go up whatever you want to. That's just what I'm picking. And now my um, basic sine graph goes up to what? 1 and down to negative 1. Root 3 over 2 is a small decimal. So for those of you who are making your y max be 100, that's ridiculous. Like your, your, your graph's going to be so tiny you're not going to be able to see it. Okay? So I'm going to make my y minimum be negative 2, my y max be 2, because that'll make me see my sine graph. And the root 3 over 2 falls in there, too. You can make it be negative 1, positive 1. You can make it be negative 5, positive 1, positive 5. So then I just do second trace 5, because I'm going to try and find out where they cross. Um, oh, whatever. I'll find that one first, then. <laughs> 120. Second trace Sixty. Now, if I go to my mode and I change it to radian, I'm gonna have to change my window to two pi. Hmm. Let me go by pi divided by two. So if it's a numeric response where it just wants the nearest tenth or something like that, and it's radians, absolutely do this. Now it's going to give me 2.09439.51. If I want to see that on my main screen, so if you exit out of this, it'll go away, right? But right now, in my calculator, X is saved as 2.09439.51. It saves it as that because you calculated that, okay? If I want it to appear on my main screen so I can see it and compare and see if it's this, what I can do then is go into my main screen, so go second, quit, and press X, hit enter, and it comes up. 
Okay. If I wanted my y to come up, whatever the heck the y was at that point, which is kind of useless because it's just going to be root 3 over 2 because that's where they crossed, I could just go alpha 1 or alpha one, and then enter and it'll pop up the y, but the y is no help to us right now. Okay, so we have 2.0943. Now I want to see if it's 2 pi over 3 because if it's not, I made a mistake. So 2 pi, that is not pi, 2 pi divided by uh, 2 divided by 3. And they match. So whenever you, you calculate a value on your graph screen, if you want to pull it up onto your main screen, you can. Just press X and enter, or Y and enter, and it pulls it up. Okay? So that's how you can check it with your calculator, all right? So what about this one? How are the solutions to sign this? And, like, how are the solutions to sign this and sign this? related. Okay? So let's look at this. So I'm going to go back to my y equals and I'm going to leave these ones be just the thin lines, okay? So the thin line graphs will represent this being y1 and this being y2. Correct? Okay. I'm going to go make them thicker. If you have the colored ones, it's even better. You can make them whatever color you want, right? But I don't have that. I have this. So I'm going to make this be y1 and this be y2 because you always make the left side be y1 and the right side be y2. But I'm going to make them thicker. So I go over here and I press enter once. If you press it a whole bunch of times, you'll see different things, but they're not very helpful. So, But some people feel the need to do that. So if you want to press them, go for it. And I'm going to put that in as 2 sine theta minus root 3. and then zero. I'm going to make that one thicker too. So that the thick ones represent me putting in the other version of it. Do we understand? So the thin ones was the first version, it's the exact same thing. And then I'm going to put the second version in, but the thicker lines. And I'm going to press graph. Possibly. <clears throat> This x value crossing, is it the exact same x value as this one? Yes. Where this one crosses is the exact same x value as where these ones cross. They get you the exact same solutions. We don't care about the y values of those, but those are the, where they cross. They give us the exact same solutions. How can that be? People are mind blown right now and feeling like I'm a magician, but I'm not. Okay. I can't even run a smart board, so how am I a magician? All right. This one... Is this one not moved over? Well, let's solve this one out. 2 sine theta, move the root 3 over so it's root 3, divide by 2 sine, sine theta equals root 3 over 2. It's the exact same thing. It's just not moved over. It's just not sine isolated. Okay? It's the exact same thing. So what's the moral to this story? Whenever you have an equation where you have something equals something, you can always go y1, y2, as long as there's only one variable. If you have more than one variable, you can't do it, because what are you going to put in for what, right? But you can always use your calculator to find it. Okay. So, example two, we're going to solve properly, and then we're going to check it with our calculator. How do they do this on the, on the final, then, to make ensure that you are actually calculating it properly? Stop halfway. They'll just say, um, dude, who, his name is dude. Dude was solving the following trig equation. And dude stopped at x step. Which one is correct? And they'll go A, B, C, D, and they'll give you middle steps, versions. Or they'll say, dude solved the following trig equation. This way, where do you make an error? And if you don't know how to solve it other than y1, y2, you'd be like, right away, because you didn't y1, y2, but that's not an answer. So you can't pick that answer. Okay? So they can force you to do it algebraically. If you're someone who's going to just try and calculate it with your calculator all the time, watch yourself. It'll get you. Okay. So if we want to solve this one algebra-wise, we have to get the coast to one side, everything else to one side, get a reference angle, solve it. Right? If we want to do it actually algebraically. 
algebraically. My mouth did not let that work. So minus 2 cos theta. So now I have 1 equals 3 cos theta. How do I get cos theta by itself? Divide by what? 3. And now everyone's like, but the unit circle doesn't have one third. I can't do this question because you're so used to the unit circle. You're right. You can't use the unit circle, but you can still do the question. Whenever I have cos theta equals something, what are my steps if it's not on the unit circle? I need to find the reference angle. Find the reference angle by taking cos inverse of the positive. So reference angle is step one. So reference angle equals cos negative one, one third. And 90% of you are going to do this in degree mode. Maybe 98% of you will do this in degree mode, and that's absolutely fine. So, plus this is in degree mode, but usually if it's in radian mode, people will still do it in degree mode and convert, which is fine too. So mode, degree, and I'm going to go second, cos, one, divided by, three. Okay, this isn't like 70. It isn't like 71. It's 70.5, blah, 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 blah. So if you don't want to retype that out 800 times, what you can do is go store it as X, or sort it as whatever letter you wanted to. I'm going to store it as X. So from now until I change my storing, that is now X. See, look, X, enter. Bam, it's that all the time. So I don't have to type out the entire decimal. So store is stow with an arrow. So you store it as X, bam, stored. It's right here. Stow. Stow as X. You could store it as Y. You could store it as M. It doesn't really matter. So we know that the reference angle is 70.52877937. Okay? Now, second step, use cast. What I do personally, if there's negative angles and there's positive angles, I draw two. I go zero degrees, negative 90 degrees, negative 180 degrees, negative 270, negative 360. Okay? The catch, though, is that I have to stop at negative 180, right? So these ones are out. I can't do negative 270. I can't do negative 270 to negative 360. Those are out. Then I do the positive version because I have to also go, I have to go from negative 180 all the way to 360. This covers 0 to negative 180. Now I have to do 0 to 360. I should have done these in different colors. And all of these are fair game. I'm not going to cross off any of them because they're all included. So all six quadrants here are included, right? <clears throat> How do I know which ones to do? Well, I go back to my question. My question is when cos is positive one-third. So cos is positive here and here, but I can't use that quadrant. It's also positive here and here. And now I just use my reference angle to get those. In the first quadrant, it is whatever the heck my reference angle is. So it's 70.5 or 71. Then these ones use it. But now that I have it stored in this lovely old calculator over here, I can go, well, this would be negative 71. This one's going to be 360 minus that angle, correct? So now I can go 360 minus x. If you have the one that arrows up, if you have the calculator that arrows up and you can pull every answer off all the time anyways, you never have to store it as X because you could just go up and hit the enter. If, does it, do you, I hope you know that. If you, some people don't know this. I just remembered this. Um, if you Check if your calculator arrows up. Okay, if it arrows up into the screen, you can just hit enter on any of that and bring it back. If you're... 
That's scary. See, I, I just assumed everyone knew that. Then one year I said it and people were like, what? Yeah, if you can arrow up and bring yours back, life is good. If you can't, you're going to have to store it as like an X or something, and that's how you can bring it back. But some people have it in their calculator. They can bring back any example. So you can bring back the whole thing. If you messed up one thing, you can go up, arrow it, bring it back, and then fill in the right answer into it and redo it. It makes life so much better. It's like a whole new life. You just I've just granted you great things. Okay, so this is going to be 289. What scares me is that some people make it to the grade 12 and never knew that. Like your calculator does these wonderful things you didn't know. Okay. All right. So my answer is then theta equals negative 71, 71, 289. Now this is where our calculator is like the best thing since sliced bread. And I like bread. I'm a carboholic. But it's even better. So watch. Okay, so clear, 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 clear. What's the great thing about a calculator is you don't have to rearrange this baby to put it in. So I would suggest you don't put y1 and y2 in as cos theta and one third. Why do I suggest that? Because if you put that in and you made an oopsie in your way of finding it, you're not going to actually catch out catch that you messed up. So always put in your original. So this will be my y1. Come on. Come on, there you go, Y1. And that will be my Y2. So 1 plus 2 cos, cos, <laughs> And then 5 cos X. Now what should I do? Make sure I'm in what mode? Degree. Okay, and my window should be from what to what? Negative 180 to 360. You want to limit your window to all of the stuff that you can find. Negative 180. 360. I'm going to make it go up by 45. Now, once you punch it in, you might see that you need to adjust your Y a little bit, but that's okay. So, I'm going to go to my window and make my Y max be 5. Why would I need my Y max to be 5? Look, I have an amplitude of 5, an amplitude 2. So I can make my y min be negative 5, 2. Nope. It only affects when you like type x in your main screen. So if you type x in your y equals, good idea, good, good comment. So yeah. And when you type into your y equals, when you're putting cos x, it's not putting in what x is. It's in your y equals your fair game. It's only when you type x into your main screen that it'll be x. Yeah. Good question. So second trace five. Enter, enter, enter. Negative 71. What do you think is going to be here? 71. What do you think is going to be here? 289. Wonderful little ditty. Okay. So these ones here, you can't have solutions. These ones? You can't find anything there because that's where cos is negative. And we have to find when cos is positive a third. Yeah. Okay. Two. Go turn to the second page. So the equation sine theta equals root 3 over 2 for 0 um, is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to 2 pi is called the first degree trig equation. It's a first degree because it's sine degree 1. Remember, you had 2s here before. That would be a degree 2. If I had 3s, it would be a degree 3. 
You'll be expected to solve first and second degree equations involving trig functions. So you're going to have to factor trig functions. It sounds a lot harder than it actually is. It's not too bad. It's just quite a few steps. There may be restricted domains, or they may ask for a general solution. So if they give you this, it's a restricted domain, and you have to give me specific values. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, what's wonderful about math is there's a general solution. Okay, general solution is a means of writing all the solutions which would be infinite. So if you don't have this lovely little ditty of a restricted domain, you're going to have to give the general solutions because they would keep going on forever and ever and ever, right? And you don't have enough time in your lifespan to actually write out every single answer because it would go on forever because you'd have coterminal angles. So then we do a general solution if they don't do that. Notation reminder. A restricted domain can be written as this or like this. Remember round bracket not equal to, square bracket equal to? Write the following using interval notation. This should be super easy because you guys started in grade 11 now. We used to not do it in grade 11. So write these in interval notation like this. This is set notation. That's interval notation. So write them like that. So it's not equal to negative 2, so round bracket, comma, 5, square bracket. Negative 180, square bracket, because it's equal to it. 180, square bracket, because it's equal to it. Round bracket, 0, pi. Now this, when it's double round brackets, that's when I get people going like crazy because they want that to be a coordinate so badly, they start drawing it, and then they're like, it doesn't work. It's a, it's, it's a domain. So if it comes after the domain, blah, it's a domain. It's not a coordinate. Please, please stop yourself. Okay. So we're going to do this one, and then we're going to start stating the general solution, which is when it gets a little bit more difficult, but not super difficult. Okay. So first step, reference angle. Well, we have to get it by itself, or we can't get the reference angle. Hmm. Root 3 tan x equals negative 1, and then tan x equals negative 1 over root 3. Now, it actually is on the unit circle, but it's kind of a hard one to spot because tans, you have to do sine divided by cos, so they're not as easy to see. So what I would do is reference angle. So reference angle equals tan neg 1 of 1 over root 3. I always do the positive, even though the positive is not an answer to this one. It'll give me my first degree answer, which is a reference angle. So... I'm going to press second tan the moment, oops, get out of there. Second tan. If I'm pressing that I need to be in a certain mode, I'm going to stay in degree, even though this is in radians, because I'm just going to convert after, because that's what you're all going to do, I assume. 1 divided by root 3. 30. Tan is a cool one for general um, solutions, because it's easier. Tan graphs repeat themselves every what? They repeat themselves every what? Yeah. Pi. Pi n, yep. So they, re they repeat every pi. So these will repeat every pi as well. Cosine graphs repeat every 2 pi. Sine graphs repeat every 2 pi. So so do their general solutions. Okay? So tan is negative here and here. And I found the reference angle to be 30. So this one here is going to be 30 here, and this can be 30 here. So this can be 150, because it's 180 minus 30. This can be 330, because it's 360 minus 30. We did these in the last unit, right? Then we have to convert them to radians. So 150 divided by 180 and add a pi is 5 pi over 6. Is 
So that's the solution to that. Now, if my answer was 0 or 2 pi, I wouldn't include it, right? Because it's not equal to. But they want the general solution. The general solution means for every solution, we're going to figure it out. So every pi or 180, it's going to happen. So from here to here, it's going to be another 180. I would land on the 330, right? Because 180 plus 150 is 330. If I add another 180, it's going to add on the next terminal arm. This way and then this way. It's going to keep happening, right? Or if I go negative, this way and this way, it's going to keep happening. So the general solution to this is always your very first smallest positive angle, so 5 pi over 6. So you're going to say, oh, it's x, not theta, sorry. x equals 5 pi over 6 plus uh, every 180. Every 180 is pi, right? So pi n. Any i. Whereas if it was a cos and a sine, it's going to be 2 pi. So I want you to solve this one out between negative 180 and 180, and then I want you to state the general solution, see how you can do. So this one, if you're finding the reference angle and all that jazz, you're doing too much work. It's on the unit circle. A half, root 3 over 2s, or all over the unit circle, root 2 over 2s. So cos x is x values in the unit circle. So where is cos x positive? In quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. Where is it positive? At 60s. So remember this one's going to be 0, negative 90, negative 180. I can stop there because it can't be up here. And this one would be 0, 90, 180. Then I'm going to stop here because it can't be here. It's from negative 180 to 0 and then 0 to 180. I'm just drawing them as two separate ones because when I used to draw them together, I'd lose people. So it's positive cos, so it's going to be here and here. Because that's where A is positive and that's where C is positive. Yes, it could be here as well, but that's outside your domain. Yes, it could be here as well, but that's outside your domain again. That's between negative 270 and negative 360, which is outside. Our reference angle is 60, so this is going to be negative 60, and this is going to be positive 60. Like I said before, you could go y1, y2, change it to degree mode, move your x min to negative 180, your x max to 180, and find it that way too, right? So x equals negative 60 and 60. The general solution, you have to watch yourself. Tan, we could do both arms with 180 because it just rotated, correct? But when you do the general solution, we're going to have, if I go from 0 to 360, because you want to go with the positive angles from 0 to 360. You would have this one at 60, and you'd have this one at 330, correct? Is there anything I can add to 60 that will give me 330 that then when I add it again will get me 60? Like, and when I add it again, it'll keep making me land on all the arms all the time? No. Tan is the only one that you can put both arms together. With cos and with sine, you're going to get two general solutions. You're going to get it for the two different arms that fall between 0 and 360. Because cos repeats itself every 2 pi or every 360, correct? So we'd go 60, so we're going to go x equals 60 plus 360n, because it's going to take me a whole nother 360 to get back to here, right? And another 360. Or if we went this way, 360 and back. So it's plus 360n nei. There's no value I can add to both these that will miraculously get me landing on both these arms. And then I'm going to have x equals 330 plus 360n. NEI. So with cos and sine graphs, you get two general solutions. With tan graphs, you can lump both arms into one. Only because tan graphs repeat themselves every 180. The negative is in here. So if I go to 330 and I make this n, because it's n is an element of the integers, if I make this be a negative 1, 330 minus negative 360, 330, 300. 
Thanks for correcting me, guys. That's a 300. Well, because it has to be 60, not 30. So um, if I go 300 and I go 360 times negative 1, it's going to be 300 minus 360, which is negative 60. General solutions use positive, not negative. Yeah, it's not 330. That would be dumb. Because your reference angle needs to be 60, which makes this 300. Okay, next page. So you're going to solve it between 0 and 360, and you're going to say the general solution. You're going to solve it between negative 180 and 180, get a general solution. The more you practice these, the easier life will be when we do hard ones, which is next. Okay? So try this one out. You're going to have to flip your answer, make it a sign. You can check it in your calculator, but when you go to punch this into your calculator, you guys, you're going to get 3 cosecant x equals 6 cosecant x equals 2. You can either figure out where the heck that is on the unit circle, because it would just be the flip versions of halves of sines, or how can you write this? 1 over sine, right? So it would be sine x equals a half. Sine x equals a half wherever cosecant x equals 2. And go find all the halves again. Where did they happen at? So the reference angle equals 30 degrees, because it's where y is a half. We need positive sign. Sign is positive here and here. So at 30, and this is 30 again, so 150. So x equals 30. And 150. It doesn't equal the other two quadrants because that's where it's negative. Go into general solutions. Because it's an indirect, it's a reciprocal sign function, I'm going to get two pi's. I'm going to get two general solutions. I only get um, one general solution when it's cotan or tan. So my general solutions are going to be x equals 30 degrees plus 360 n NEI or x equals 150 degrees plus 360 n. You could plug this into your calculator, but how do I plug in um, 3 cosecant x? If I wanted to, if you want to just go ahead and plug this in, this is y1 and this is y2, which you could do. You can't plug in cosecant, right? Cosecant x you can't plug in. But if you look on your formula sheet, what is cosecant x equal? 1 over sine x, correct? It's right there. Cosecant theta equals 1 over sine theta. So you could just replace it. So your y1 would equal 3. And then instead of cosecant x, I'd have 1 over sine x minus 6. And in my y2, I'd have 0. And then you change your window to be between 0 and 360, right? And you could find it that way. <clears throat> or you could type this into y1 and that into y2, but that's already, like, solved for, so you might have made an oopsie. Try C. Okay. So I'm going to subtract the 3 cotan over, so I'm going to get 1 equals 2 plus 1 cotan x. When you subtract 3 cotan x over, you're going to end up with 1 cotan x. Subtract the 2. Negative 1 equals cotan x. Which means tan x equals negative 1 as well, because this would be just one, negative 1 over 1, which flips to negative 1 over 1. Tan is 1s and negative 1s at the 45s, right? Because root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. So tan is negative in quadrants 2 and 4. So it's going to be 135 for the positive, but you can't count down here because it stops at 180. And then for the negatives, it's going to be here, which is negative 45. And you can't count here because it's outside the domain. 
So x would equal negative 45 and positive 135. Now, if I want to do the general solution, though, I need all the positives that happen in the first quadrant. So for general, I'm going to get 45 uh, here and here. So I'm going to get 45 here, which is 135, and 45 here, which is 315. Now, what's good about cotans and tans? You can write them together because they're always 180 apart, right? If I go 135 plus 180, I get 315. Plus 180, I'll get back to that arm. Plus 180. So tans, you can write your solutions in one solution, your general, your general solution in one solution. Cosines and sines, cosecants and secants, you have to write in two. So I'm going to take my first positive, which is 135 plus 180n. Any I. Now you're going to flip ahead a few examples to the next page. We're going to go to example uh, one for factoring. The psi. <laughs> Oh, wait. So we're going to look at B for a second. Now, I know it has cos squareds and cos x's. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to say that A, I'm going to let, not only like M, M be cos x. So I'm going to say M equals cos x for now. So it's not so daunting. So now I have 2M squared plus 7M minus 4. And you just need to be able to do decomp. However, if you can't do decomp, this is still daunting. Whether it's an M or a cos, it still looks horrible. So, what times what equals negative 8, 2 and negative 4? What plus what equals the middle term, 7? So, positive 8 and negative 1. So, remember decomp, we take that 7m, we hack it behind our heads, and we replace it with 8m minus 1m, because 8m minus 1m is just 7m, right? That's all we're doing. We're taking the 7m out. And we're hucking it away, and we're going to replace it with 8m minus 1m, which is 7m. We can replace it because they mean the same thing. So 2m squared plus 8m minus 1m minus 4. That's why we don't touch the 2m squared or the negative 4. They stay there because we're not actually doing anything with those. We're just taking the 7m, and we're hucking it out, and we're replacing it with 8m minus 1m because that is 7m. Then we have four terms so we can group. I can take a 2m out of the first one, and I'm left with m plus 4. I can take a negative 1 out of the second one, I'm left with m plus 4. What's in the brackets has to be the same. That's how decomp works. Now, why does it work that way? Because I say to myself, self, here's two terms. The two terms with the reds underneath are two terms. What can I take out of those two terms that's the same? m plus 4. They both have an m plus 4. So I take the m plus 4 out, and when I take the m plus 4 out of both those terms, this m plus 4 is gone, this m plus 4 is gone, what am I left with? 2m minus 1, that's why decomp works the way it does. Now, worst case scenario, hmm? yes, so I'm going to do that, m equals negative 4, and m equals 1 half, this is the worst case scenario. Everyone's like, yes, I solved factoring from grade 10, I rock, and you move on. You did nothing with the cos. You've done nothing with the cos. So after this factoring, you have to replace the m's back with coses. So cos x equals negative 4, cos x equals a half. And now you're solving these just like you solved those single trig equations we did before. You are going to learn to be super excited when you get a cos of something larger than 1 or larger than negative 1. Why? Your basic cos x graph goes how high? 1. Your basic cos x graph goes how low? Negative 1. So right now, if I went to graph this, I'd have cos x in my y1. So, and then I'd have negative 4 in my y1. So it would be doing this, and there'd be a line down here. Where do they cross? 
Nowhere. This gets you no solution. So if you have a basic cos x equals anything larger than 1 or anything smaller than negative 1, you're not going to get an answer because your cos graph is going to be all wiggly here and then you'll have a line above it or a line below it and it'll never cross. And that's what you're trying to find is where it crosses, right? And where does cos x equal a half? Well, I'd have to give you a limited domain, but say I give you the domain between um, 0 and 360. Cos x equals a half, that's on the unit circle. It's on the unit circle at 60s. So at 60 degrees and 300. And you'd have your answers. Now sometimes, it's not always going to be a no solution here. Sometimes you get two answers here and two answers here, so you get four answers. For example, two. Try it out. Um, so sine x equals negative a half in quadrants three and four. Um, <clears throat> so you're only going to get negative an answers for this one. Um, it happens at 30s. So this one will be at here and here. So negative 30 and negative 150 which when we convert it will be negative pi over 6 and I don't it's, it's mushy and negative 5 pi over 6 sine x equals 1 when y equals 1 y only equals 1 at 90 degrees which is pi over 2 So your solutions are going to be negative pi over 6, negative 5 pi over 6, pi over 2. Now, remember general solutions. We need the positive versions to get our general solutions. So this here, the positive solutions of those from 0 to 360, this is going to be 7 pi over 6, and this is going to be 11 pi over 6. Those will be the smallest positives. And then pi over 2 is one from here, right? So to do general solution, I'm actually going to get three solutions. I'm going to get this one plus 2 pi n NEI, this one plus 2 pi n NEI, that one plus 2 pi n NEI. So for every single one, you're going to get a general solution. B we've already done before. Um, you just move your 3 over, square root it, and whenever you square root something, you get plus or minus everywhere, right? So you get an answer in every quadrant. So this one actually is easy to state your um, general solution because it's just whatever the first solution is, plus 90, plus 90, plus 90, plus 90, plus 90, right? It's going to get you in every quadrant. Um, if it was a cotan or a tan. But because it's a cosecant, you get one arm 
plus 180, and then you'll get another arm plus 180. Last type I wanted to go through was D. People will sit here for a long time, especially once we get to the last lesson in Chapter 6. Replace it if you have to. So, M equals sine X, N equals cos X. So, 2M N minus N equals 0. What could I possibly do? No. What could I take out of them? An N. And I'm left with 2M what? Minus 1. Most people are good at remembering the minus 1 if this is a minus N. However, if this is a plus N, people are like, okay, N divided by N, it just evaporates, it's gone, and then you just put n and 2m. You can't do that. n divided by n is minus 1. If this was a positive n divided by n, it'd be a plus 1. If you're someone who knows that you wouldn't plus plus 1 and it would just evaporate on you, you write yourself a little side note and be like, when I divide these two, it doesn't equal 0, it equals 1. And there's lots of you who do that. Then replace. So now we have n equals 0, 2m minus 1 equals 0, 2m equals 1, m equals a half, then replace your words back. So n is cos x equals 0, and m is sin x equals a half. So it's between 0 and 2 pi. This is on the unit circle. This is on the unit circle. Do you see how important knowing the unit circle is? <laughs> Even on the last test, you need to know your unit circle. OK? So cos x equals 0 when x equals 0. x equals 0 at the y-axis, correct? So it's going to be at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Where does sine x equal a half? Well, it equals a positive a half at 30 degrees in quadrants 1 and 2, because sine is positive in A and S. So it's going to be at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Right off your unit circle, you could read those. So the answer on the um, test will be pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. Now. How could they ask this as a numeric response? They could say the largest possible value between 0 and 2 pi that satisfies this equation is in the form a pi over b. What's a plus b? So you have to decide which of these is the largest answer. Well, this is 30. This is 150. This is 90. This is 270, which is the biggest. 270. So it'd be 3 pi over 2. A plus B would be 5. So your answer is 5. There's no answer 5 on here. It's 5 because it'd be 3 plus 2. Okay. Or they could ask for the smallest possible, possible angle. At the bottom here is your assignment. I won't assign that whole thing.